The key biological process that makes plants different from animals is known as photosynthesis. Normally thought of as the way that plants convert the energy from the light from the sun to chemical energy that the plant can either use or store. What's less well known is there are actually three major forms of photosynthesis. The early version, known as C3 photosynthesis, and at least 65 million years ago, several different plant species independently started to adopt what's known as CAM. Then, about 30 million years ago, some plants evolved another form of photosynthesis, known as C4. What's the difference between these methods? Really more importantly, why does it actually matter? With C3 and C4, C refers to carbon, and CAM stands for Crassulation Acid Metabolism. A bit of a mouthful why it's normally called CAM, named after a family of succulent plants. Now when plants are photosynthesis, you have a number of completely different problems to deal with. The method of photosynthesis used alters how they deal with these particular issues. Firstly, plants can only photosynthesize in light, normally from sunlight. And the more sunlight the cells are exposed to, the more they can photosynthesize. Many plants produce leaves with large surface area to maximise the amount of sunlight they're actually getting. Next, they need access to carbon dioxide. It needs to be close to the cells doing the photosynthesizing. The underside of many leaves have thousands of small holes in them called stomata. It allows the air, including carbon dioxide, to get into the leaves. The size of these openings can be adjusted depending on the needs of the plant. From the hottest and sunniest part of the day when the plant we want the greatest access to fresh supplies of carbon dioxide. These holes may fully open. However, these holes also allow water to exit the plant at the same time. For many plants, around about 98% of all the water taken up by the roots of the plants is lost through these holes in the leaves. So depending upon the conditions of a plant in this regarding heat, sunlight, carbon dioxide and access to water, plant may want to develop systems for managing these resources it's actually using. Now from about 250 million years ago to about 65 million years ago, carbon dioxide concentration in the air was between 1 and 2,000 parts per million, or give or take about 3 to 6 times what more recent concentrations have been. It means that plants didn't have to have many stomata or actually open them that wide they need enough carbon dioxide for photosynthesis to take place efficiently. And as a result, they didn't lose that much water through the leaves. However, around about 65 million years ago, the carbon dioxide levels started to drop. Those plants in dry climates started to run into serious issues with water, especially those near the equator. And many of the plants in this area developed smaller leaves with thick, waxy coats we even did away with leaves completely. This reduced the water loss, and being near the equator, they were still exposed to plenty of sunlight. They really needed a more efficient way of getting access to the carbon dioxide without losing so much water. Of course, the ideal way around the problem was to open the stomata at night, and the air would be cooler and water loss would be reduced. They still needed access to substantial amounts of carbon dioxide during the day. The solution was to store the carbon dioxide from the night inside the plant, then access those reserves during the day. It does this by the use of a chemical called malate, which is an organic compound with a four carbon atoms, or C4. The cams uh, use the malate to basically warehouse the carbon dioxide in the form of malic acid in the vacuoles from the daytime when it's transported into the chloroplast during the day when it's needed for photosynthesis. Since some fortunate well for what would basically become the cacti and succulents. However, as carbon levels, dioxide levels dropped a little bit lower, some of the ancestors of pink tropical grasses like sugarcane and maize were also experiencing some difficulties balancing out water loss and access to carbon dioxide. I mean, not quite as severe in the case of things like cacti. Solutions use the same malic acid that was being used in the cam plants. But instead of storing it during the night, malic acid would be delivered straight to the point of use. This kind of delivery method uses more energy than more kind of random air circulation method of the C3 plants. However, 
your water loss is actually reduced by about two thirds. It means that in dry conditions, areas that experience tropical levels of heat, C4 plants can have a significant advantage over C3 plants. However, in wet, cool areas with limited sunlight, C3 plants have a significant advantage. Now this is an extremely simplified version of what the various plants are actually doing. While some people may be interested in minute arrangements taking place inside plants, most people won't be. There is, however, a very important real-world issue when it comes to C3 and C4 plants. The vast majority of all the plants in the world are C3-based plants. This includes most of our key food sources like barley and rice. The world population is likely to grow substantially over the next few decades, and some areas likely to experience severe water shortages. Some scientists are working on developing drought-resistant versions of many common plants by converting C3 plants to C4, much of the current focus being on developing C4 rice to enable the world to produce more food, at the same time use less resources like water and nitrogen-based fertilizers to produce all that food.